Hello there, good evening, and welcome to Ed Live. Of course, uh, this program is dedicated to inform and educate you about what is happening in our country. As you're aware, um, I think we know Joe. Joe, welcome to the program first and foremost. Thank you very much, Eddie. Um, I might have to change that um, lower third that they have been holding the government accountable because um, first and foremost, we have a caretaker government, and so we may seem as though we're heading down the road where we may have an illegal government. Um, well, I. I don't, I'm not too sure if I should say legal because if you look at the first deadline on the, on the 1st of March, whether or not we should say legal. However, the program is to bring you information as regards to what is happening in our country. And most of you are aware um, they, there has been much talk, um, much, of a, if you want to put it as a public outcry among Guyanese, uh, very concerned about the influx of foreigners into our country and um, large numbers being unaccounted for. Um, as I introduced Joe Hamilton earlier, he's a member of parliament of the People's Progressive Party. And of course, um, Joe, welcome to the program once again. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. And um, <coughs> as you have indicated, uh, the, the issue in the public domain that is being discussed uh, through the length and breadth of Guyana is the influx of foreign nationals <coughs> into in Guyana. Guyana. Uh, the focus, you know, the last couple of weeks, it has been on Haitians arriving in Guyana, uh, unaccounted for, uh, because they are coming in by the thousands and are not returning out of Guyana. Um, if you note, uh, many persons have tried to style it a racial issue, uh, tried to style it that the issues about race, and so. I would want to start to debunk that and to make the point that the issue is not about race, the issue is about accountability. That is what the issue is about. And there are persons, you have, yeah, I'm sure Ed, you would have followed uh, many comments on Facebook and in social media near about people talk about the Brazilians. And so I would want to lay before the Guyanese um, so that you have an understanding and uh, you wouldn't allow yourself to be fooled and drag into some contention that is race is the fundamental issue here. Now, if we look at the influx of Brazilians into Guyana uh, some years ago, that came about when gold price skyrocketed at yes. a certain level. Yes. Uh, it was about 1,500 US dollars a, a, a ounce or something like that, if I remember. And then you had an influx of Brazilians into Guyana primarily uh, entering into the mining industry. Um, and those people were, uh, they came in and they went out. So they were coming to Guyana, working in mining industry, operating in locals in Georgetown, and they have been leaving, contributing to the economy because uh, some of the new mining techniques that our medium and small skin miners today Explore with those were introduced to the mining sector by the Brazilians. Many have stayed on here and they have opened businesses, um, more so uh, in, in the mining industry, in, in the food um, and restaurant area and so. So they have been contributing and they have uh, been employing people in the Guyanese economy. The other focus is on the, is on the Cubans who have been coming um, to Guyana since, uh, and you have an upsurge of Cubans coming to Guyana since the Americans made Guyana the destination point for Cubans to um, apply for, for, a visa, visa, for a visa. So you have an influx of Cubans. But again, they can be accounted for. The Cubans in large measure are coming to Guyana to uh, shop to buy uh, clothing and all the other things that are far cheaper than they can get in their own country. And they are accounted for because 99% um, of the Cubans that come to Guyana to shop, they go out back of Guyana. If you go to the airport daily, you would see them with their large uh, suitcases, their boxes, uh, going out with stuff that they have bought. and. That or you simply walk down Regent Street. You, you, you see, see them, them purchasing. They're, they're, yes. they're busy. It, it is not 
It is not hide and seek. Uh, they are out there. We see them. We see them contributing to the economy by bringing hard currency because uh, in large measure, they bring US dollars to shop in Guyana. So they're contributing and they go out by the uh, large numbers and the figures um, will, will, will bear that out of, their, of, of them going out. The difficulty you have here, and that's why the focus is on, uh, is on the Haitians, is that they arrive in large numbers, but they don't seem to go out at all. <laughs> that is a, that is a that is where the issue is, and no one uh, sensibly can say to us. I'm talking about the government, where they are, and let us examine Felix trying to explain. This is a former commission of police. This is a man who is a minister, the minister of of of, of Im Im immigration, immigration, immigration. And when he spoke to the Guyanese people, he could not say to us in a definitive manner where the Asians they are. He couldn't say that. Um, he tried to say that they are coming, they are using Guyana as a transit point to get to Brazil, to get to Colombia, to get to Suriname, to get to French Guyana, where they have relatives. Now, the question is, if indeed heading, they're heading to Brazil, then we have immigration and customs that is at the, 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 the Takutu Bridge. And therefore, Mr. Felix, you should be able to give us a number, the Guyanese people, how many Asians have left through the Letem uh, Immigration Department. Secondly, if you say they're going to Suriname, we know customs and immigration pay some attention, even the backtrack. How many of those persons went through the uh, quarantine area? That is, how many are still in Guyana? Certainly, they're not going to Venezuela. R right. So we right. don't, we don't, we, need, we don't need we don't need that number. Uh, how, the point is, how many are still in Guyana? How many of those that are in Guyana are employed in Guyana? Those are fundamental questions. They got nothing to do with race. Those are questions that any government that is honest and transparent would answer uh, and give those answers to the Guyanese people. The point is, those that people say are employed in Guyana, do they qualify to be employed? Because, as you have said, Mr. Felix, they are coming in here with temporary um, uh, visitation certificate for six months or whatever. They don't have a certificate or permission to work. It's, it, it's, it's a different thing. You come in here uh, uh, with the six months, to spend six months, and the first thing, the six months, is questionable in the sense that the six months should only be based on the fact that the person is able to take care of themselves for six months in the country. In the country. Uh, that is the point. You go to, uh, any, any we go to Barbados or Trinidad or Jamaica or any one of the Caribbean islands, when we go there, th that question they ask you. You have to say how much money you have, where are you going to be staying? Who is putting you up? Who is going to feed you? But you have people in large numbers, thousands coming in with children in, involved. Uh, children, the question is, so we can look at it from a social standpoint. Do you have large numbers of children in these uh, arrivals? Yeah. The yeah. issue of a school and schooling would come to play, right? Because you have them. So you have that, the issue about who is coordinating them? Because it is not people coming to visit on their own by themselves. It is groups of persons who are coordinated uh, primarily starting at Haiti, uh, continuing at, at, at Panama, and finally at Guyana. So the government must say whether they have approved of this, whether they approve this activity. Our information is state agents are involved in this smuggling racket, as we call it. It is a 
people smuggling racket. And it is for the government to deal with it. And that has security implications, Eddie, because the thing is, and, tr uh, and let me just divert to make that point, Trinidad is faced with an issue where you have an influx of Venezuela. And what has happened with that influx is they're now challenged to deal with a security spin-off. The issue about gangs migrating to their country, known notorious gangs, armed to the teeth with the AK-47s and all that kind of thing, operating now in Trinidad, in some instances, some of them have merged themselves with Trinidadian gangs. And so you have the social issue where these persons are trafficked, smuggled. Then you have the security issue. And then the third issue you have is the public health issue. But before we go down into those two, I want to take you back to the issue of coordination because what we observe and what we have information on is the fact that there is a group of persons, both locals and a few Haitians who probably would have, um, who are part of, of this, this whatever um, organization, movement, whatever you want to call it, taking care of you, that it is the same group that is going to the airport every single day mm -hmm. to collect these people when they arrive. Yesterday, I think, uh, probably about 150, um, they were about, they, I don't have the exact figure, but a, not a large group came in. The point I want to make, um, Joe, when you touched on it, the fact that when you're visiting a country, if I decide to go to Trinidad or Barbados or anywhere for a vacation, first and foremost, like you rightly said, I must show, in order to get the six months to stay, I must be able to show, I must be able to say who's picking me up, where I'm staying, provide information on the address, phone numbers, a whole host the of things. The six months is not automatic. It's Felix not that you and, and they're, they're trying to give the impression. The six months is not automatic. It's not an automatic six months. I see um, uh, morons like the Gordon Mosleys and them trying to suggest that it's an automatic six months. The six months is based on you have the capacity and the financial means to sustain yourself for six months in the, in the country. That is, that is the issue. And the, the other issue I, I, um, I want to raise, because I, I see an effort by the government today to mask the whole issue one, like you rightly said, with race, somehow trying to give the impression that they be, people are targeting the Haitians because of their ethnicity. And I think you've addressed that point. You've addressed that point. What the, the, the government, they tried to mask this thing in some propaganda today in the, in the Guyana Chronicle by publishing arrival figures of 51,000 um, Cubans coming, um, then Trinidadians coming, they, they even put Americans, I think mm -hmm. they said is the second or highest number, mm -hmm. the third highest number. What they did there is to include all the Guyanese mm -hmm. who are coming home yeah. um, during who the... Who might have a U.S. passport and, and, and whatever. They come like now, like now, you have a lot of people they probably here. Put the, 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 they probably put the Guyanese who are coming back from vacation and all yes, uh, yes, on yes, that yes, list. Yes. And that's not a problem. You can publish those figures. We're happy you publish those figures. What we want to see now is the departure the figures. Departure figures. The departure figures. Because uh, the Culture News, they have published the, the departure figures of the Asians. Turkey. That are minuscule to the numbers that have arrived. 13 of 8,600. Six probably now about um, 9,000. Because since they published uh, the day after 94 came and then they, uh, they added some other number. So the point is, uh, is if this was not a smuggling or trafficking uh, ring operating, you don't have to play hide and seek. The Brazilians, when they were coming to Guyana, there was no hide and seek. You could know, you could find them where they are. Uh, they are. They are operating down Regent Street, you could go Rockies. We knew Charlotte Street, uh, you know, uh, the Minister of Public Security, you know, he would know <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte Street to the Brazilians. I say no more on that matter. But the point is, the point is... You're reminding me of a story, Joe. <laughs> the, point is, the point is that 
Uh, and some people, I see some of the... Is this um, relating to some strip club? Uh, it's, uh, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> some people jump onto the Chinese. The fact is, the Chinese, you know where they are. They are running businesses, uh, selling cheap commodities. So in this instance, you have thousands of people from a country arriving in, your, in Guyana that is unaccounted for. That is a fundamental issue. It has nothing to do with the color of the skin. It's the unaccountability of the person. And where the government is failing to speak to the Guyanese people about the, the way they have done. Look, I, I show you the, 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 what is happening. The government is able to say to us, via the interactions with the, CD, with, with the CDC and the Venezuelans, more so who are uh, in Region 1, that we have so far in Guyana 6,000 Venezuelans who have come here to seek refuge. And we have granted them through uh, the refugee status uh, procedure for them to remain. So there is a number. And you can find large numbers of them, most of the population of those persons, in the Northwest District in Region 1. So why, are, why is the government not informing us the same way that they can tell us and give us information about the Venezuelans? How about the Asians? Why the cloak and dagger? Why the hide and seek? And the fact that you have state actors from the level of immigration, the police, all involved in this. Um, look, look I, I'm sure I, I'm told the, the Asians are given a free pass at the airport regarding uh, at the co at customs level. So, so the customs also, so all these state actors. You don't even know the guns are being smuggled. The, the point is, and it's a very serious matter, a very serious matter, because if the, 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 you have the Guyana Revenue Authority is giving these people by the thousands a free pass with their suitcases and whatever, not examining what is coming into our country, then we can have a, 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 a serious... And, and, you know, this again is not race. We know the history of Haiti, and we know that over time, you have had several paramilitary-type groups contesting for power, in, in, in the country, and therefore the fringes of those, uh, of those groups still exist. We don't know if many of the persons who are coming to Guyana might belong to those, to those groups that we exist. Don't, we don't know if those persons that, who may belong to those groups are recruited to come to Guyana. Th that's the point. Th that's the point. We don't know. That is the point. And, and the point is, if... Felix cannot give us answers. David Granger must give us answers, President of this Republic. The same way how Rowley and his government is attempting to give answers and has attempted to give answers to the Trinidadian people for the influx of Venezuelans. It is the same way this government, even its caretaker mode, it must respond to the Guyanese people and inform us about these unaccounted Asians. I don't even want to deal Eddie, with the, the, the issue about uh, the attempt of electoral fraud. I am dealing with the issues of the social issues, the security issues, and the public health issues that can spin off. But, but we, can't, we can't discount the, the issue of possible Electoral fraud. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not discounting it. I'm not discounting it at all because um, it, is, it is a matter that is, that, is, that is out there and it is a matter that, you know, we have, we have to deal with and we have been dealing with it. But tonight we want to say to the Guyanese people the question about the Haitians arriving in Guyana and are unaccounted for has nothing to do with their ethnic origin. It has nothing to do with their race. It has to do with the fact that dealing with this, uh, the Asians, the government is not forthcoming with the matter. Look, and let us examine. One uh, employer 
that is RK Security. He has published, and the government or no one state agent has debunked what he published. He has said agents of the Haitians came to him and sought to have him employ dozens of Haitians. Further, he said it, whilst they are Haitians, these people had Panamanian and Venezuelan passports. So it is not just a smuggling racket. It is a falsification of documents racket also. Because Roshan Khan Arke is saying that these people that were presented to him, they did not have passports that was Asian passports, even though they were Asians. What he said further, and, and this is another um, important thing and very worrying, is that he was asked to employ them while the documentation being is being paid. processed in Guyana. Yeah. So, 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 and the government agents, and the no government agency, they have debunked uh, Rojan Khan uh, uh, presenting that to the public. That and is out there and so it's, it's simple. I mean, ask yourself the question, and, and the viewers, I want you to ask yourself the question. If if you're confronted by someone, you, you're facing someone who is a national of Guyana, holding a Trinidadian passport, and you're asked to employ that person in Jamaica while the person gets documentation, is, isn't that, something is smelling it, it is enough for an investigation of the police, for, uh, and, and that's the point. I mean, the commissioner of police also, and the old security apparatus, they're sitting down on their laurels and not even responding to the public concern with this matter. No, but, but Joe, you're talking about the police. The point I want to make, and, and this is information, confirmed information, the police at the airport is more concerned. A young lady, a reporter from one of the media houses was up there yesterday. And the police woman who was at the airport approached her to say, why are you filming? And she's filming the Haitians. So the police was more concerned about the journalist doing her job then as against the, the, the people, people who are coming who here. Who are unaccounted for in our country. And the commissioner of police, just like how, Mr. Commissioner, let me address you specifically tonight. The same way how you were quick to make the point that the matter of the investigation of Charandas was a security, high security matter or something like that, he said, this is a higher security matter. Right? This one here, where you have thousands of people coming into this country and are unaccounted for. And then you had Eddie, uh, Mr. Jordan, <laughs> the Minister of Finance, who was saying to the Guyanese people, he has no difficulty with people coming in here to work for cheap labor, to push Guyanese out of the labor market. Because he's saying that whilst jobs are available, Guyanese don't want to work. And therefore, he has no difficulty the question to ask, Mr. is that the government policy? To sideline our Guyanese people, make them unemployed, so that you can hire foreigners to work for below uh, minimum wage. This is the government. And you know, I want to, before you, I want to read for the, for, the, for, the, for the viewers exactly what Mr. Jordan said. And I'm quoting Mr. Jordan here. Mr. Jordan said, if I, I'm prepared to cut grass for $1,000. And the I in this scenario he was referring to is the foreign. foreign national. So if I, as the foreigner, is prepared to cut grass for $1,000, but the native, who is the Guyanese, wants to cut grass for $1,500, who are you going to employ? He said this, and this is his view, what he will do. Most obviously the $1,000, and I will go for the thousand dollars. So this is the Minister of Finance yeah. who's supposed to be part of that uh, that mechanism, if you want to call it, to create jobs for people, for Guyanese in particular, saying that if a man comes from, from yeah. Brazil or Cuba or somewhere yeah. and he's decided to he decided to cut grass for below the minimum wage, you push the Guyanese when the decided. usual price is fifteen hundred dollars, yeah, he's gonna Guyanese. choose the man yeah. over Guyanese. Fundamentally to where the is this with that Jordan statement, the 
people in the labor movement, you have not heard a quick from them. You know, my good friend Lincoln Lewis, he speaks about everything. But here you have uh, a minister of the government saying that he is prepared to push Guyanese out of the labor market to accommodate foreigners for cheap labor. And then you, you have these guys who present themselves as their uh, black nationalists, they represent us, they say, not a streak as to, on this matter, of the trafficking of the Asians and the people smuggling, right? These, these, these are representative of the black cause and, and, and they spout all these kinds of uh, words. Now you have, based on everything that we have, a human trafficking, a smuggling of persons taking place in broad daylight. And all these black nationalists, they're silent as a lamb. They have not commented at all on the matter. So, so let, me, let me recap this idea as we move on to another point. To make the point that the issue of the, fo the focus on the Asians has nothing to do with their ethnic origin and who they are. It has to do primarily with how they are coming to Guyana, how uh, they are leaving Guyana or not leaving Guyana, and all the illegalities surrounding their arrival in Guyana. That is a fundamental issue. Yeah, but, but Joe, I also want to make the point before, because I, I want us to move off from this, because we have a couple of other things to talk about. And you, know, you, you and I were having some discussions. You operated in the Ministry of Health for some time. And you did mention you want to address the issue of the public health concern. So I'm going to ask you to address this just a bit. But what I want to um, also say is you, you spoke about the security issue and the failure of the government, Mr. Felix in particular, to say to us, if you're saying that these people are using Guyana as an intransit point to go to other countries, then like you rightly said, you're supposed to give us figures who departed for Brazil, who departed for Suriname, etc., etc. If you can't give us those figures, and you're likely, Mr. Felix is likely to raise the argument, a lot of these people going back track and, oh, we, we can't, that's another issue. That's the point. That's a major that's security issue. You, you have, have thousands of people floating around your country, going in and out your country, without you knowing what they're taking or what they're bringing. That's a serious security matter. So all these people who are ignorantly seeking to style this conversation as picking on the Asians because of their race, time will tell. You know, if we allow this to, to run as it is, time will tell. Once you have a situation like this hop operating, it will reach a dangerous point when some of the same people were cheering on to the they will understand the seriousness of this matter that we are discussing today. I want you to quickly touch on the... No, the, 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 the issue the is that, as, as, as we know, um, that the leading country regarding HIV and AIDS in, in, the, in, in, in this part of the Caribbean is Haiti. I'm not dealing with HIV and AIDS. I'm dealing with a, 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 a disease that, the, that is also at the highest rate in, in Haiti that is tuberculosis, that is easily transferable. That is transferable with interaction uh, of persons to person, people moving in and out. Also, after the earthquake, uh, there was an outbreak of, of cholera also in Haiti, and, and, and it is not totally under control at the moment. So we have those two public health concerns, and again, the people in public health should be concerned so, 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 so uh, and, and the other issue that with public health is that the fact that you will have these people by the thousands here, if they're still here, with the children and all that kind of thing, the burden of the public health system, we will have to deal with that very shortly. Because when they get ill here, they're not going to be flying on a plane to go back to Haiti or to go over, the rip, or over um, Brazil or Suriname to get looked after. They would find themselves. So, so. We in Guyana, we have to be prepared for all the things that can develop. And we're saying to the government, if you have taken a policy decision 
in this regard, then you must tell the Guyanese people what is the totality of your policy regarding Asians arriving in here and departing here. That is what we are asking for. So, we, so for, we are not asking for anything more. Or, or, or we we got to put it a, a little further, um, Joe. <coughs> Based on the, the whole talk about not just Haitians coming here, Trinidadians, Cubans, Brazilians, and so on, what we are asking for is the arrival figures and the departure, and the departure figures. figures of all, all these the people. All the foreign nationals. That's all we are asking for. All the foreign nationals. Give that to us. Put it out there in the, in the public domain and let the people see whether the Haitians that are coming are actually departing. And I want to make one more point. Because I'm seeing a lot of people talking about, oh, and, and they, they, they love to go back to blame the PPP. Oh, under the PPP, the Chinese were coming, the Indians were coming, the Brazilians were coming. And you made the point about, about the Brazilians got, getting into the mining sector. The Chinese that they're talking about that were coming, you can see Chinese restaurants, you can see Chinese huge stores. They invested here. So you, they're creating employment. So you can, you can justifiably say that these people who came, these Chinese and so forth, and the Indians, they have a lot of stores as well. You can account for them. You see that they're that, investing the point, and they're Eddie, doing something. Eddie, the fundamental issue is accounting for the nationals. The people who are coming, and I have, I, I, can, say this, I can say this, Joe, the people who are coming from Haiti, the Haitians who are coming here, if you understand Haiti, Haiti is divided into two economic classes, basically. There's hardly anybody, any middle class in Haiti. Is that if you're rich, rich or poor? Or poor. Yeah. And the people who are coming here, the tickets to get here is about 1600 yeah. and something yeah. US who, return. Who is funding those? Who is funding them? Whole families also. How are they surviving? Yeah. Are they here for vacation? Yeah, what is the purpose of the visit? Those are the simple that is questions it, we want to get that's answered. That's but I want us to move off, Joe. I want us to move to something else. And I saw uh, Mr. Trotman glowingly talking about um, 400,000 ounces of gold declared for the first half of the year. It is funny, it is strange, and it's suspicious, if you want to put it that way, that we have had so much complaints coming from miners, small miners, medium scale miners, and even some of the large scale miners about the difficulties they're facing. The government imposed a whole host of taxes and all sorts of things um, with regards to input into the mining sector. A lot of miners, even small miners, medium scale miners, are pulling out of the sector. I told you about the story of one guy who has an excavator in the, in the interior and he said, I can't afford to bring it out. I have to leave it there. It is cheaper to leave it. To leave it. His home, they were going after <coughs> the, the bank because nothing really is happening in the gold industry. So this is suspicious. Jim, Eddie, but I Eddie, 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 the information we have is that a lot of the gold that has been coming in here that are part of this uh, half year 400,000, it is coming from Venezuela. So you have a smuggling racket of gold coming from Venezuela into Guyana, and then you have state agents again, people who are high up in the government, involved in a barter racket with the Venezuelans uh, in, 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 in the Northwest This, this area. is a serious issue. Again. So, so the, the rice is being bartered for gold. So the glee Mr. Trotman is gleeing up with is not real gold in a sense that it is coming from the mining industry of Guyana, suggesting that people are employed by the thousands in the mining industry. It is gold that is smuggled into Guyana from Venezuela, bartered at, the Mo at Morawana in the Waini area there where rice. Now, the question is, are we to expect a shortage of rice the same way we have a shortage of chicken? Because if you have tons of rice being bartered for gold um, coming out of Venezuela, then we have an uh, issue developing uh, the other day. So, so the numbers, uh, when you look at the numbers, the 400,000 ounces, it's not a real 400,000 ounces that is coming, uh, out, coming of out of the Guyana mining industry. It, it's a paucity. And so we, we say that. The other, the other uh, 
racket you have in the same market is U.S. currency being paid for uh, fuel. So also in that area you have the uh, smuggling rack, fuel smuggling racket that the GRA is aware of. The security forces they're aware of uh, state actors involved in these activities and nothing is being done. Um, and what makes it more serious for us is that the persons of Venezuelan origin are persons who are members of the Venezuelan security forces. So you have an interaction of a country that claimed large swaths of our land, their military is regularly in our country via Region 1, involved in business transaction. The other important issue to note is that the UN and other countries, they have uh, put sanctions on Venezuela. Venezuela. And therefore, outside of all the, the, the that activity, you have state actors who are busting sanctions, international sanctions, because they are doing the types of trade with Venezuela that they should not be doing based, based on, on the sanctions that led levied uh, on Venezuela. And as I said, the most serious implication is that the persons who are involved in the gold smuggling and the fuel uh, activity interacting with, with, with state actors in Guyana are members of the Venezuela military establishment. So I, 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 we, we, we want to hear from the Commissioner General. We want to hear from the, uh, the, 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 the Commissioner of, of Police. And you know, they, 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 of course, they will take the position that it cannot be factual because it's coming from the PUP. You know, the issue of the Asians, we have been speaking about this already since the year start. The country woke up when Kaicho News published this story. You know, but it's not a new story at all. We have been speaking about this matter. Since 2017. Uh, yeah, or for that matter, since we challenged Felix in the Parliament, in the Parliament uh, Foreign Affairs Committee to give us numbers on this matter. So... That is happening um, at the level of the of the of the state actors, very well placed persons. Well, we know uh, the, the people who have the fuel license. Well, the, the, the commissioner general is aware of, of, right. of all the people, and we know where um, they work, the positions that they who are in involved the in, in and these everything. activities. So I just thought, um, and the Guyana Gold and Miners Association, you must pay attention to this matter. We ask you because the four hundred thousand ounces. Uh, are not from your members, the total <laughs> deal. Uh, a lot is coming out of uh, Venezuela via the military establishment. Joe, we have just, I'm, I'm sorry tonight we weren't able to take your calls because um, we had so many things to talk about. I hope uh, next week we'll be able to take some calls. I want us, we have like probably about five minutes or so, operator. About five minutes, uh, three, four minutes to go. I want us to quickly uh, provide some information with regards to our position as it relates to elections as a result of the no confidence. Well, the major, the major position, a statement issued today by the People's Progressive Party indicating for all and sundry uh, to know that the People's Progressive Party civic member of parliament will not be, will not be, let me put emphasis, returning to the National Assembly to extend the life of the government. Let me repeat again. The People's Progressive Party Civic will not be returning to the National Assembly, Member Parliament will not be returning to the National Assembly to extend the life of this government. We will not legalize this caretaker government that will be an illegal government midnight of the 18th of September. That is the position. As regards elections, we are continue to make the point that elections must be held, should be held before the sep September 18th, as, uh, as indicated 
and ordered by the court. And thirdly, the, the issue about house to house registration, um, we would not support it because our contention is that elections uh, must be held the soonest. And we hope that very shortly, the Guyana Elections Commission would indicate to us about its readiness to hold an elections in the shortest possible time. Joe, I want to thank you very much for joining me this evening. Of course, I gave you the floor this evening because I know um, these are issues that we, we want to get out there, we want people to understand. And before we go and we wrap things up, I just want to do a quick recap to say that the issues regarding the arrival of foreigners here, uh, all that we are asking for is for the government to provide us with the figures, like they provided the Chronicle with figures of the, the Cubans and, and the Haitians and, and the Trinidadians and the Americans and so forth coming here. We would like you to provide us with the figures of their departure, all the categories that you are talking about. Just provide us with those figures. And clearly, the government don't want to talk about departures because they would have done that already. The silence of this government tells a lot and it, it, it gives a clear indication that state actors are part and parcel of everything that is happening with regards to the Haitians. There are many concerns, issues of, of, of um, electoral issues, electoral security issues, health issues, human smuggling, yeah. the major issue there. So also, um, I think Joe just made the point that uh, the People's Progressive Party remains steadfast in its position that our MPs will not return to the National Assembly to extend the life of a government. That is already illegal if you really go back to the 21st of December and the, 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 well, the 21st of March. <coughs> will not go back. And we hold fast to our position that elections must be held on, the, on or before the 18th of September. Claims and objections can simply um, update the, the list, list and we can have elections. Mr. Lowingfield himself said that the existing list can be updated via claims and objections. All till next week, Joe, I want to thank you very much for being here. Thank you very um, much for having me here. could have gone on for a couple of hours more. But, um, <laughs> There's so much to say. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Have a good rest of the week.